Thank you, Doa. Another win here for AHQ, bringing them to two and one. So all of a sudden, they are you know deep into the discussion for uh, moving into the bracket stages of this tournament. Let's talk about how they got there though in this game, and we saw so much prioritization in uh, in killing and diving Thaldrin over and over and over in that top lane, uh, all with the knowledge of the fact that he's one of their major carries and their shot caller. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. We spoke about how we thought that they were going to go bottom lane. They looked like they tried that. Then all of a sudden, it just got to a point where TF had the uh, destiny available and they repetitively dove top lane. I what was impressive was the response, though. Uh, I think it was a, a lack of pressure from the mid lane by the Gragas. You know, they tried to gank the Twisted Fade a little bit, but never really ensured having proper vision control. You have to group with your Diana, deny the pink wars. Tips of Fate has pink wars on both sides, allowing him to just roam back and forth and back and forth. You're going to lose to Tips of Fate every time he goes off the map. Everybody has to play safe. It's like, oh, is he going to gank us? Well, yeah, actually, he is going to gank you. And that was a mistake. And that's something that, that uh, not the top tier teams have, that they can just really recognize where the vision needs to go and where the vision denial needs to go. So that's something that uh, BJK can actually take from this game and use it moving on because vision's going to take them a long way in this tournament. And I like that about looking at games and taking something from it because I hope TSM was watching this game <laughs> because it was Cassiopeia Gragas yeah. versus Nar Rek'Sai, which is the exact matchup they had and they didn't camp the top lane. Cassiopeia ended up 3-7-2 and two this game just from pressure in the top lane and then not allowing her to make plays later and then just having small skirmishes off on the side. I thought that was the just brilliant play there from AHQ and TSM needs to take a lesson from that. I feel like what MSI is showing that there's a stylistic point to ganking top lane and going for the tower dives. In the beginning, we've talked a lot about those mid lane giants, Faker, Pawn, battling it out against each other. Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon. Okay. The German <laughs> Easy Hoon is not. <laughs> and he's still the immortal Easy Hoon, so I, I agree on that. Um, Easy Hoon definitely. And we, it was a lot about mid lane, but I feel like everything is shifting more towards the top lane. Who is unable to get the TP ganks off? And like so many games were decided by the top lane. Six bands in one game towards the top side. So I think that's slowly shifting the focus more to the top side and opening up the map like this. And then we're seeing more and more of the home guard first so you save your TP for that. And I think that's actually going to come out on top yeah. in this tournament as a huge strategy that teams should be picking up. I want to jump back to something that Spawn was going to was going to mention is, though, how Besiktas responded to that top lane pressure. Because they, in, in turn, yes, they may not have focused mid. They put all of their pressure into that bot lane, as we've noticed they've done, and controlling the objectives on the bottom side of the map. And I thought it was really smart because realistically, they didn't lose this game until the Jinx got rolling. It had absolutely nothing to do with the NAR. The TF got soloed out twice in the late game. The person that really destroyed this game was after that downtown rocket took someone else, gave the nice boost of gold over to the Jinx, and then all of a sudden, Jinx was just so doing so much damage. He did that like if, four times. And meanwhile, they continued the pressure in the bottom lane instead of repetitively going top. I actually feel like they could have got more out of it because they were repetitively shoving them out of lane. They had a 2-0-0 server that was doing a lot of work down there. In the end, it was really Anne that got... AHQ over the line. Yeah, but it's important that you shut down the Cassiopeia so she doesn't crush that NAR match. I, I think that's like, so the boulder doesn't roll over your top lane. I thought a problem of that not just came about from that downtown rocket, but an overcommitment from BJK and going for kills. I remember specifically a Rek'Sai flashing over the wall in topside, and Gragas can either flash and get the kill immediately, but it's a tough wall, you know, that's not the easiest flash to get. So they wait for Diana to tower dive from behind on a kill that takes about 20 more seconds because you got to wait for the Diana to come. Gives AHQ the time to react, set the counterplay to TS like, oh, yeah, I got, you know, 15 seconds to TP top, TPs perfectly, then the downtown rocket in the follow-up. So overcommitment from that, but you make a good point with the Jinx just being able to, mm -hmm. being the actual carry because Twisted Fate yeah. did get Yeah, what you out. saw exactly with the ultimate flying in. Meanwhile, Jinx was just bot lane having a field day, CSing all the way up and getting the tower on the bottom side, and then Jinx was just so strong who was shut down in the early game. So I think that they should have put more pressure on the bottom side, yeah. especially because Anne was the only one being able to carry on later. And I actually don't think they shut the Cassiopeia down. It had a 45 CS advantage and had two turrets. Cassiopeia was completely fine. They shut down that side of the map, but I don't think that the actual Cassiopeia was ever in danger, still pumping out major. Yeah, damage. she ends up with a 100 CS advantage at the end of the game, yeah. but if you didn't oh. put pressure on it, it <laughs> would have been much higher, I think is the point that I'm trying to make. Right. Even still, she managed, as you mentioned, to uh, burst out the TF. We saw the 1v1 
maybe if the gold card came out, it would have been a little different <laughs> instead of the red card. But regardless, I think uh, what this kind of then narrows us in on is as we go through the mid and the late game and we finally start to see these two teams stack up in the 5v5, AHQ is coming out on top. And I think that points to just a little bit more cohesion within the team, communication that's falling short on Besiktas' part. Yeah, I feel like AHQ just in the end showed why they are such a strong team. They find the pickoffs, they instantly kill Dumbledore and just snowball on from there on out. And you saw that multiple times. So I think this is a strength going forward. All right, well, with that out of the way, I do want to turn real quickly to our final match of the day, SKT versus TSM, a much-awaited matchup here. Quick thoughts from you guys as you give your predictions. Spawn, I'm going to start with you. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually going SKT? with TSM this time. And the reason is, is I actually did my predictions beforehand, and I thought TSM were a really strong showing in this tournament. And after one bad game against Fnatic, I'm not willing to jump off the hype train. I think this is one of the teams that they would have prepared for extensively game one, and I really do trust their coaches and analysts in getting this one right. All right, I have to caveat this with the fact that Faker is playing. Oh, well, even easier. Confirmed play, even easier. <laughs> my goodness, spine here. Oh. Just no, just never, never pull. And yeah, and I think punches. this is the point. I'm a strong believer of uh, the Church of Faker, so my guess is SKT, and I feel really strongly oh, about them. A convert! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a believer of Ezeon. Well, I'm slowly becoming a believer of Ezeon, but Faker is still my point. I mean, you speak of bandwagons, and uh, I'm just going to say that I'm pretty much like a hobo. I'll jump on any bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on the Straight SKT up. again, because I think that the showing Don't they had against EDG side. was really impressive, and that was a little... Uh, didn't like the TSM pick that they had in the previous match, but I think that they're going to change that completely. Might not be enough, though. Yeah, and I drive the bandwagon, so you are welcome <laughs> aboard. I'm also going SK Telecom on this one. All right, well, there you have it. Three to one in favor of SKT on the desk. Let's check in with the fans voting on lolesports.com. And right now, 52% are going with SKT. So Ooh, by the narrowest well, well, well. of margins, uh, we'll see how that works out. We'll, we'll see uh, who is right, of course, after the break in our final game of the day, SK Telecom T1 versus Team Solo Mid. Stay with us. Another win here could give them actually a really good chance to get to the playoffs. Tries to make something happen as well. Westor comes in, another gold card lands. Will it be another kill? Oh, not quite. Can Thaldrin escape here? I don't think so. Turns around, gets the ult. It's not enough though, a double kill now. Mountain actually manages to take out Nardius on his own and Theocles goes down another double kill for Anne. With that Zonius and Albus coming up with Anne as well. That's a double kill now for Jinx. There goes Energy, make that a triple kill. AHQ is going to end the day 2-1 and really position themselves well to make it into the playoffs.